All four of you are going to hell. No. Nope. You're the only one of us who can stop them. Kageyama, use all your powers. I can't just let. I'm really die. curious to see what what this all means and where this goes. Reagan's philosophy was really intriguing, but I want to hear more. I want to see more. It's okay to run away and save yourself. It feels like there's something behind this. Speaking of something being behind this, he's fine though. This isn't good. No, it's not, Reese. It's not, Risa. It's not, not my good. Brother like a tidal wave. There's no telling what'll happen. I have a feeling it's gonna evolve a certain number. Reagan talking about running away and saving herself. Meanwhile, risking his neck or back in this case to save mom. <laughs> Hypocrite. Terrible, lovable hypocrite. <laughs> How do you know, man? How do you know when to cut and run versus when to grit your teeth and fight? I guess, like, honesty is sort of critical. Are you okay? You know, are you drowning? Is it something you're equipped for or is the challenge something that's going to destroy you? I guess it's just the challenge of life. Like, it's probably in the areas of greatest danger that you find the greatest rewards, if that makes sense. But the danger is real. <laughs> Can you go that deeply into the abyss without it destroying you? Actually, that's probably a terrible way of raising it. I feel like looking the abyss honestly in the face, looking darkness dead on, in a way that allows the maximum amount of truth induced pain all in one go is probably always going to be beneficial. It's the other kind of looking into the darkness that destroys you, where you're in the darkness, but you're not allowing yourself to look at it as darkness. You're like disguising it as light. You know, you're disguising it as something that you need. Or there's a story that these things that feel terribly wrong are okay because of some superficial comfort they bring you or whatever. Justifying things that rot at your soul because you're too afraid of what life would be without them or the fact that maybe you'll never have the things you desire without, you know, making those kinds of compromises. That's what truly terrifies me. It's not darkness that reflects truths of life that one must accept. It's the darkness of cultivating and then living in this world of lies and illusions in order to cling to some semblance of feeling safe. I really don't want to hurt people. Oh, he's surprisingly calm. But if I don't, we're going to be killed. So I'm kind right. of stuck. I mean, in that choice, though, there's a range of choices, right? Like, you don't have to annihilate everyone. It would... <sighs> a what? No. Impossible. Hey, don't scare me like He just that. conned his way to death. <laughs> How is he standing? How? He yeah. Sliced hard. Hey, what's going on? He's you know what the ultimate con is death. if Reagan has supreme Bastard. psychic powers. You never know with this guy. Real adults don't have It could be mob doing it. With toy swords. <laughs> Time to grow up. Oof. I guess I understand how he's Kageyama's master now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about that. An evil spirit! Hey, Mom, do something! Oh, he saw it? Well, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry, I, I was greatly animated. Is he being possessed by Mob or something? Looking pretty damn awesome. Is he some kind of monster? <laughs> How can this be? He's definitely a force. Is he gonna be okay? Leave this to the He's got something figured out. I don't know what it is wow. exactly. I'm in great shape today. Master really is amazing. So mom's not doing it? Those with power must choose to fight. The thought of that responsibility made Mob's bridge collapse. As a result, huh. all of Mob's energy was temporarily tossed over to Reagan. Interesting. And convenient. <laughs> All that was left in his heart was gratitude towards his wise master. 100% gratitude. Oh my, wow. 1000% gratitude. <laughs> That's so wholesome and sweet. I love it. Are these soap bubbles? <laughs> I love the trash talking. It's sort of excellent. What happened to the man who was trying to run away just a moment ago? I guess it actually does represent a part of this I wasn't thinking about. Like, I was talking about mob and the challenges of deciding when to fight or run away, but perhaps implicit in that conversation was Reagan sort of taking responsibility. It wasn't, you're gonna run away and, and so am I. It was more like, you can run away because this isn't your fight, it's mine. Something like that. And it's a little bit cute, right, that Reagan gets powers all of a sudden. But then again, everything that is meaningful in shows has a real-life counterpart. And so powers are not really powers, but can be viewed more as things that imbue people with strength. You know, things that are understandable. Especially psychic powers. Like, that's an easy one. That's an easy translation into real life. And yeah, I do feel like some of the moments where I felt the strongest were moments where I came through for other people and felt clear that that was the right thing. And those moments not being me trying to gain someone's approval or 
get a return or a reciprocal reward. It was more like, this is the thing that would feel best for me to do. Like serving people, helping people in this way is the highest thing I could be doing right now. There is a real boost in personal strength that I can bring, I think, from experience. And I think other things, other concerns or, or minor worries have a way of being dissolved into that light. And that light also has a way of making clear that which I have not been excelling at or I'm less than satisfied with and is therefore called action in that way. One punch! But I mean, if he has mob's powers, this is not, not a huge deal. Looks cool though. Very flashy. Lots of property damage, which always makes it more fun. When speaking to someone, you should take off your mask. Heads up! Oh, guess it came off. And as a side effect, it killed her. Listen, somebody your age should stop messing around with toys. <laughs> He's really de devoted to this, like, adult children thing. He's just trying to get these very oversized kids out of the forest. Oh no, Reagan has seen its dark side. No, no, no. I, I, I don't know his backstory. I know Reagan has seen some stuff. At the orphanage, I was bullied relentlessly. I cursed the world. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have survived. Mm. All that rage and resentment helped awaken my powers, and I was able to get by because of them. Fair. You and I were like brothers. <laughs> I knew it. I forgot to tell my parents that it was sports day at school. Oh no. I was the only one it's going to be nothing to eat. Trivial in comparison. Why bring it up now? To show our bond of feeling lonely at times as boys. <laughs> <laughs> don't compare that stupid story. I mean, I don't know. Like you can't really compare pain, right? If all else fails, I can put you to sleep with this cursed cologne. Cursed cologne. This guy must be familiar with New York subway system at rush hour. You know what? This might be controversial, but actually I think my personal take on what this guy said about like using that frustration and anger to get him forward actually is fine. Like it's better than being crushed. I just think there has to become a point where you grow up, you know, like you, you can use rage and dissatisfaction and a chip on your shoulder to go really far and get yourself out of whatever hell it is that you you find yourself in. You know, like use every tool at your disposal as long as you're using it for your own best interest. It's hard to have a wonderful perspective on life and be this fully realized human being when you're you're drowning, you know, but there's got to be some kind of trajectory or else there is something non-adult about it. It's like, how long do you want to make excuses and, and blame other people for your entire state of being and your own emotions and your own terrible deeds? When do you stop trading your own autonomy and agency to people you don't even like or a society that you resent? What's with all that stuff on your forehead? What? That's, uh, it's nothing. You wouldn't get it. And it's, what's he's cosplaying. Goofy things that look like shoulder pads? He thought it would be intimidating. They're fashion it's accessories. Fair. They don't serve any real purpose. <laughs> Oof, hitting him where it hurts. His outfit. You're still only human. No more and no less. It's the same for everybody. But somehow you've all forgotten that. This I think is one of the most genius elements of Reagan's outlook and philosophy. No one's gonna follow you knowing that. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> First, get rid of those ridiculous <laughs> shoulder pads and grow up. He really came in with a hammer, didn't he? Nothing is safe here. <laughs> Your facility, your bodies, your emotions, your outfits. You just want to escape from society, right? If you hope to make it big, you have to live in reality. Consider that the starting point. You're telling us to return That's to being great commoners? insight. What? No way! You're not getting it! Why don't You're you really understand this? Never special. Think about who the hell you are for a second! Or at least, this is not what being special is. I'm a commoner! And I'm much more powerful than any of you will ever be! Right, you live by this game, you die by this game. He dragged them out of the delusions. Find something of higher reality. value. He actually won by talking, ultimately. Although it, you know, took a lot of psychic power as well. That is absolutely false! <laughs> That's Psycho Mantis? I actually thought he was a girl this whole time. So did I. I reject your claims that deny I called him Lady Psycho Mantis. Society really doesn't care about you either way. Society. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. No group of average people is big enough for a god among men like me. This is over the top, but like, this is very real. I feel like everyone does this one way or the other. It's hard to avoid. It's hard to live. Surviving's a chore, even though I'm so special. <laughs> <laughs> That's so poignant, so sad, and so hilarious at the same time. It's like, I'm just so great. Like, I am the, the center of the world. Why is no one noticing? Like... Why is no one paying attention to how great I am? I have all these amazing and special things that no one is paying attention to. Like, I follow all the rules. And I'm kind to people when I can't get away with unkindness. I know a lot of facts about my interests. Other people who do not know facts are not as as good. It's hilariously tragic. But of course, like what just happened, the greatest threat to people like that are people who are more soundly minded 
and have more quantifiable talents you can write on paper. Those people are a death sentence to people who have like been building up their self-identity out of these superficial scraps of paper. Like I said, this is a really exaggerated, over-the-top, emotional version of this, but this is one of the biggest games of life, and I, I think one of the hardest things to work on, but I think an area of some of the greatest rewards. It seems built into us physically, like it's a human instinct that is deeper than cognition, to want status and it's probably connected to mating you know it's probably connected to like being of higher value to attract better partners which is you know one of our most fundamental and important desires and can totally consume our every molecule if left unchecked as i have recently found out in my life and there are some really obvious ways people do this you know with fame money power things that are generally desired by others are things we desire ourselves because having what others want is leverage. That is opportunity. And honestly speaking, having those things is even less important than seeming like one has those things because we judge people based on not necessarily what we know about them, but what we perceive about them. But anyway, those are sort of the big things. And if those are more difficult, then people will sort of go down the rungs to get the highest thing that is within their perceived grasp. And people who just like cannot get something that is good, they end up grabbing onto things that are not really objectively that interesting or that important. But they will try to conceptualize it in their mind so that the things they do have, these tiny traits or skills, are everything, but then get frustrated when the world doesn't adhere to those same set of criteria for evaluating people. The sad truth of the whole thing being that it's actually all a delusion. I mean, there is no safety in mating. <laughs> and true value is actually the hardest thing. Like, it's harder than money. It's harder than power. It's harder than fame, I think. Probably because it involves looking at a much greater amount of truth, which means peering into a much deeper abyss of darkness. Something very interesting to me that I heard related to this is, like I said, one of the main focal points in terms of establishing value societally is money. But one thing that's shifting, apparently, is because wealth is becoming something that is more readily available, like pretty much everyone living in a modern country today is better off than just about anybody was like 200 years ago, right? So a theorized result of this is since people cannot get the same amount of power and utility by flaunting wealth as they once did, the new currency is something like moralism. There is always a group of people, or maybe it's most people, who would like to establish themselves as being in a higher class, right? And then of those people, there are a certain amount of them who are successful in that. But since money means less, the people who are successful in that that new class are more likely to leverage their moral outlook as a way of boosting their superiority in the way they want to project that out into the world. And something about that really rang true to me and is so great. It's such a great idea, like people taking on these moral stances, not because of actual idealism or commitment to goodness, even if there happens to be some overlap, but by the same exact thing it's always been. You know, just the same kind of selfishness, the same kind of social climbing, the same kind of opportunism that's existed since cavemen, bringing a giant giant piece of meat in order to impress a potential mate. It's all the same thing. Very hard to escape just the fundamentals of humanity. It's obvious I'm amazing. Why won't you just acknowledge that? <laughs> oh my god, that's that's such a great line. Wrong. Having psychic Tell him up. doesn't make you popular. See? There you have it. You'll never be popular. I mean, he already knew that. So give it up. He just was clinging to this idea. He's got nothing else to go for. Erase this whole building and start off! If only you could be popular for head wrinkles, head veins. Actually, I'm kind of tapped out right now. It's been a long day for us all. Don't get sucked into this guy's world. <laughs> it doesn't work out well. You just don't know when to quit. Oh, this kid. Gary decided he was doing his own thing. But you're no longer needed. And then he killed him. I'm disappointed in you. You coward. Oh. Oh. What did Mob do? I was ordered to inspect the place and take anyone who seemed useful back with me to HQ. Let's get to higher up. See ya. And then he just apparated out of there. Okay. Evil Thanks for coming. Been whittled down to one. Let's just give it a rest. <laughs> These guys are still going. <laughs> Stop. We're finished here. Yeah. Come out, marshmallow. Oh, you didn't say it was marshmallow. <laughs> hey, look who it is. What the hell is that? All oh, right, he was in there. I forgot about him. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> Totally forgot about Dimple's existence. I exercised them from my mind. Is this an evil spirit? So does Reagan maintain some semblance of powers from now on? We're weak, plain and simple. There you go. To this, I've realized those guys just might be able to do it. Stop Claw from world domination. Is that what you want? Last one. Oh no, I'm in a roll. I'm in a losing roll. Really? It's been a lot of growth in a short time, I feel. So much has been established and changed. Ah, 
to pull me. What about Cookie and Cookie Girl and Pepper Girl? Today's the day that you're gonna talk to me. The body oh. improvement clubs today. Fine, I'll just wait for you. But oh. I've got my job after that. <gasps> Read between the lines. <laughs> Middle school, am I right? Bad memories are coming back of not reading between the lines. I'm gonna apologize to Onigawara. I'll go with you. He got some sure sleep. He no longer resembles me. My brother's on my side, so I'll keep in line. It'll be tough, but it's for the best. It's a bold and brave move. Respect. I like it. That was a crappy thing to do. <laughs> I do anyway, so it's not like it really matters now. Nice. The Body Improvement Club has done wonders for his psyche. People didn't care whether I was actually the culprit or not. They were chomping at the bit to come at me. Mmm, that's a really good insight. I realized that I was hated by everyone and how wow. weak my heart was. Speaking of growth and improvement. I'm still gonna grow, just like White Tea Poison did before me. Fight! I feel like there's no one who doesn't benefit from joining this body improvement club. It's just a miracle cure for your soul. They just have a single focus and it's a good one. Except for all the running. You could do it without that. My brother is strong, stronger than anybody else. He looks passed out to me. <laughs> Lost a shoe in the process. Right now it's like a wild goose chase, so I'm trying to get some solid leads first. She's working really, really hard on those leads. You guys tried to help me out with that. Well, I did a search on the internet earlier today, but I didn't find anything. Wow, a whole internet search. Usashi! I just love him. Nice to meet you. So you guys must be the research subjects here. Whoa, Look at this kid. Take an action in life. He already has like ventures. Do you guys want to train at the ripe you young age stronger? of middle school? Everything you saw was mob's powers. The only thing I gained from it is the ability to see you now. Otherwise, nothing's changed at all. Okay, that answers that question. They actually make an interesting pair. Always oh, say that, you push over. Here, let me see it. I mean, he's in middle school. He could be doing a lot worse things than bending spoons. There, good as new. Man, it's only 12 episodes, but God, what a rich and warm world that we've established. I'm just in love with these characters. I'm in love with Mob. I'm in love with Reagan, Ritsu. Teru being a really cool surprise. And there's a really nice common thread between them that I think was very well chosen. And even if seeming obvious, is so universal and potentially damaging that it's like the perfect thing to really hone in and focus on. And that thing is, I think, the search for value and self-understanding and all of the pitfalls that that contains, all the psychic dangers that lie within. It's really hard to say what it is, but it's a lot easier to say what it isn't. And I think that's what a lot of the characters are getting caught up on. Ma being... The protagonist, I think, largely because he's one of the people who is the least stuck. You know, he doesn't have the answer, but he's open. And for me watching him, interestingly, my feeling about that is that that makes it guaranteed that he'll find it. Almost as if the danger is in finding answers too quickly, if that makes sense. Or like not being able to withstand the darkness or not being able to bear the discomfort of not having these pillars to lean on. When in truth, a lot of the time, building these artificial and unnatural pillars of self-identity, you know, things that are comparative, things that are judgmental things that are not based on truth end up being more painful in the long run as they become calcified and as they become things that will eventually crack and come down perhaps even for people as old as lady psychomanis i was asking you for a status report on the inspection the organization you're so proud of isn't the best in the world by a long shot quit messing around and come back to japan already dad you he's the son of the boss if gary's father was giovanni and i'm loving this like local triple double and credit sequence thing. We've gotten reports of Tsuchinoko sightings. Oh boy. Put a bounty on the Tsuchinoko and is requesting help in capturing it. You had me a bounty. Episode 12, Mob and Regan, a giant Tsuchinoko appears. It's a very late, very late title card. You ever seen a Tsuchinoko master? Once on TV. Oh, check it out, over there! Is it a bear? You're not ready, Mob! I knew this place was a jackpot when we got here! Huh? You actually found one? No, it's a Matsutake! It's huge! <laughs> Well, that's a win for the day. Pack it up and go home. Is this a, what do you call it? The thing we're looking for that has the bounty? Shrank so much after you exorcised it. Actually, that's kind of- they pronounce exorcise it. What the hell Gets me every time. Anyway? I got a lot of mushrooms. Here. Those things don't exist. It's right there. Grab it. How much is the bounty? How much money do we just leave on the table? Oh, okay. Is it over now? <laughs> that's- it just kept going. The end credit scenes kept delivering. Wow! So that is Mob Psycho Season 1, and I had a hunch I would like this show, and I didn't know how much I would like it. It it gives me life, honestly. Mob is the best kid. At one point I mentioned wondering about his backstory. It, in my opinion now, is such a genius move to not have gone into that at all. It doesn't matter. It's not the point, right? It's about value. Mob, in my eyes, is not made special because he is really talented, although that definitely is a great thing, right? Not to take anything away from that. It's a 
wonderful gift that he has, and there's a lot to admire about being talented. It's not the thing that makes him better than anyone, or complete as a human being, or what he actually needs to find as a, as a person, in order to feel good about his life and about who he is. That's going to be a long journey for him. And I think, as I've said, the beauty of him is sort of not exactly where he is on that journey, but how he proceeds along that journey, just being good, being open-minded, being conscientious, caring for others. And you sort of have no doubt that he's going to succeed, and it's really, really easy to root for him. And it's also just, like, really adorable. <laughs> Watching him flounder with things that he thinks are just so important that everyone who's made it past middle school knows is sort of not the end of the world. Love it just become the end of the world later on as an adult. What's very exciting to me is that I know that season one is well received, but I have heard almost universally from people who talk about the seasons that season two is better somehow, so that's a thrill. I cannot wait to get to season two. I gotta give a huge thank you to everybody who has supported this series. I feel like there is something very special, speaking of which, in the hearts of those for whom this show resonates, although perhaps that's arrogance of some kind. But yeah, huge thank you to all patrons for making this channel possible, making these videos possible, for being awesome, supportive, amazing people. Love you guys very much. That is the end of season one. I'll see you guys very soon for the beginning of season two.